phone. All right. That was so easy. <laughs> so Last easy. topic of uh, year 12 methods, which is on uh, sampling. And we're going to start off with the most basic, which is sampling technique. All right. So what you need to do today is be able to define what a random sample is and discuss the different sampling methods and processes. All right. There are two different types of um, sampling method, probability and non-probability. Any of you probably have done that as well many years ago. All right. Now, the basic idea. We could actually collect information or data from the entire population, which is a census. Or we could use a sample. This will be representative of should be, or not will be, it should be representative of the whole population. We're only picking part of the uh, group, that's all. Not the whole population. For example, if you want to, uh, if you want to survey the whole school, it could cost time, it could cost money. It probably is easier if I could get um, some students from a um, different year group. All right. So think about basic. Uh, think about when you're carrying out a survey, whether you want to do a census or whether you want to do a sample. And even with Australia Bureau of Statistics doing a census, I bet you they miss out quite a bit of information as well. They can never. You can never really get the whole thing, in my opinion, anyway. All right. So collecting data, you need to know what a parameter is. A parameter is a numerical measure. <coughs> which is mean, median, mode, standard, deviation, etc. All right? A census aim to collect data that can be analyzed to produce accurate figures for those population parameters. Now, an entire population can be very large or be very difficult to access. Therefore, it could be impractical to conduct a census. So, if you want to collect data, it's a good idea. If you could, ideally, we could... Uh, Ask everyone, but not quite. So we select subject of the population, call a sample. Subset of the population, call a sample. So a survey can then be used to obtain the same information from each member of our sample, which is much quicker and cheaper than dealing with the whole population. Now, statistics. Statistics are actually numerical measures of a sample of a target population. These sample statistics can be used to make inferences about the population parameters. So if you want to know the mean income of subscribers of a particular magazine, we could ask every subscriber and then work out the mean. All right? We know that every subscriber is actually the population, but sometimes we don't need to do that. We only need to estimate. We, need to, we, ju we only need estimate. So we could ask perhaps a sample of 100 subscribers. All right, the thing is the subset is very interesting. We've got to think about how many people we should actually uh, interview or say if you've got a sample of 1,000 it's no point asking six people only because it's useless if you've got a sample of 10 six people is more than enough all right so sample size is the very interesting one we'll talk a little bit more about uh, finding the sample size a little bit later all right it's never going to be uh, the sample in my opinion anyway when I've done surveys like this it's never going to be uh, enough or never going to be uh, all too much. They seldom just right, hit the right uh, equilibrium. So let's have a look at uh, example one. A school conducts census at the beginning of the year aiming to investigate the amount of part-time work their students do. What is the population of this survey? Students. Is it the whole school? Think about it. The students who do part-time. Yeah, students who could actually Okay, question like this, you've got to think about what, how to answer it. If you ask something like this, you cannot be using the whole school because the year 7 and 8 obviously, obviously are not working. Alright, you've got to think about the population is the students who are old enough to have a part-time job. And even students who are old enough to, yeah, you, those, are, those are the population. But then, we're going to target just a group of uh, students, perhaps, just who, who actually work. So what are some possible parameters that can be obtained from the census? 
Um, what about things like a um, number of hours work? Yeah. All right. Employers and mean of the uh, mean the population of the uh, the proportion of the population with part time job. Mean of a number of hours work per week. The mean hourly rate. And if you want the uh, categorical data, what sort of a uh, what sort of uh, what are the employers? Could be McDonald's, Coles, Uber, or whatever that sort of stuff. So we are talking about here the um, numerical data. But if you want to collect categorical data, those are the things that you could collect as well. Right? And then let's think about example two: a sample of twenty people waiting at an ATM. Um, queue at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. We ask how much they intend to withdraw. Smallest amount was 20, the mean amount was 78, and the greatest amount is 500. What would the population be? People drawing money from an ATM. Yep, people oh. going out the oh. ATM. All, everyone, in fact, you would think about is uh, everyone using the ATM anyway. That's the population. Yeah. We're looking at a subset oh, yeah. in this case. The parameters could be minimum, maximum, and the mean of the withdrawal. And then the statistics. The statistics is actually the number now. The minimum withdrawal is 20, maximum withdrawal is 500, and the mean withdrawal is $78. So think about what the statistics is. What is the parameter? So statistics is the actual number. Now, when conducting a survey, a well-chosen sample will give useful information about population. However, we must be very careful how we select our sample and how big our sample should be. All right? A fair sample is one that is representative of the population. I will talk a little bit more about bias on Wednesday. A biased sample will not be representative of the population and it will favor some section of the population. So let's say if we are trying to think about uh, maybe we want something new for the school, all right? If you go out and just survey the year 11 students, that's a biased sample, yep. right? You need to think about a fair sample. I just want vapes. So, what? Vapes? Yeah. Nah. Yeah. The, year 11, so love the best the way of selecting a sample <laughs> So as to reduce the likelihood of unwanted bias would be used some type of a random process. So random process is important. Now, there are two types of sampling methods. It's either the probability sampling method or non-probability sampling method. So the probability sampling method involves random selection, in which each member of the population has equally likely chance of participating. This is a better method for reducing bias and obtaining representative sample. Whereas a non-probability non sampling method involves non-random uh, selection in which it mem each member does not have equal chance of being selected. Now, there are a few types of sampling method that you need to know. It's all listed here. The probability sampling method and the non-probability. So things like sample random sampling, stratified sampling, systematic sampling, and cluster sampling. These are all probability sampling method. Non-probability sampling method, convenience sampling, quota sampling, volunteer sampling, judgment, or pur uh, purposive uh, sampling, and snowball sampling. All right, we'll go through each and every one of them. So we're gonna start off with uh, probability sampling method first. Now, do you all have your class pad? Grab your class pad out because we're going to use class pad to generate some random number. Oh, wow. Oh, it's going to be so useful in the exam. What? It's going to be very useful in the exam. Class pad? You reckon? It's a joke, mate. Oh, I, I forgot my class pad. Did you? How's that a joke? Really He's sarcastic. He's sarcastic. Huh? He's sarcastic. Right. Now, so a random sample or simple ran random sample is one that is selected from a population in such a way that every number of the population has an equal chance of being included in the sample. 
To obtain a random sample, we can assign every member of the population a number. Then we select numbers from the desired range using a random process. Now, what I'm going to do is show you how to use the random number generator on your class pack. It's all there, it's all in your hand up, but I'll go through step by step. So, using class pack. So, if you scroll down all the way to catalog and tap on R, you will find the command red list. So, here. Hey what you want is get <laughs> class back to generate certain number of uh, random numbers between A and B. Could be 1 to 100, 1 to 1000, 2 to 200 or whatever. Alright? So N is just a number of uh, um, random numbers you want it to generate. Wow. Got it there? What you need to do is, can you use your class back to rent? to randomly generate five integers from one to ten. Now, the number you generate will be very different from mine, will be very different from your friend sitting next to you. All right, let's go through it step by step. So if you put in rent list five, one and ten, this is what I get. You will get different number. Definitely very different number. I got, I got six nine twice. All right. So what if you want to generate a population? Oh, just, sorry. Say say we have a population of one thousand, from which we need to select a random sample of fifty. We could begin by allocating each member of the population an integer from one to one thousand, and then generate fifty random um, fifty integers. Now, the next bit is if you want to calculate a summary statistics from a random list on the class bed, we can send a list to the statistics application. Let's do everything at the same time. Start off with, let's do a random list, 100, 100 numbers from 1 to 1,000. What you want is to send it to list 1, statistics application list 1. To send it to List one in statistics, you need to use this arrow there, under Math one keyboard. All right, you will send the list. You generate hundred numbers, but the hundred numbers will be actually in your. Where do you get this one? Where do you get this one from, sir? Type it. List one, just type it in. You you have to type type it in. You cannot uh, find list one anywhere on your class pad. You have to type it in using A B C. Different values. We will need this a little bit later because we will be generating numbers. So everyone will have different random number generators. You generate different numbers. So when you go to statistics, everyone, you can see that the numbers are all in this one now. All right, listen. If you want, you can of course go to list to a list tree, it really doesn't matter anyway. So generally, what you want is a list of number, random numbers. Yeah. Yeah. From there, yeah. if you want to find the uh, statistics of those numbers, yeah. for example, uh, mean, median, you can use calc one variable, and then you'll get the mean, the median, the standard deviation. Now, what you generate will be different from what I generate. Really? All right. No. There's yeah. a chance. There's because a chance it's random number generator. Yeah, one in the base, clear trillion. So you will not. I, I mean, for example, my number started yeah. with 808, yeah. then 756. Yours will not be. Yours could be starting with one. Because it's one to 1,000. It could be 1,000. times two. All right. So. Basically. Just remember, for random gen number generator, you'll not get the same thing. So this is the process how to do it. If you need to uh, generate a list, like, generate a list of numbers and put it in your stats. Now, stratified sampling. In stratified sampling, the population is divided up into layers of strata. Then the samples are randomly selected from each strata. 
Now, let's go to the next one. Oi. So, the way that I've done this, I got this from a website. So, you've got a population. What you've done is you group them in the homogeneous group. So, all the green, all the blue, all the purple, and all the I don't know what that color is. All right? From there, you select four from each group. So, that's stratified. These are all homogeneous group. For example, it will be, let's say, for Shenton College. If you want to uh, survey the students, that could be year 7, year 8, year 9, year 10, year 11, and year 12. Alright? So it's stratified, they are homogeneous, and from there on, we pick something. Alright? Could be middle school, 7 and 8. Uh, year 9 and 10, year 11 and year 12. Yeah, could be right. that way. It's more or could be based on age. No. So you've got a stratified or stra stratified um, assembly. You've got a strata, you've got groups. And you pick people from the group. Alright? So, alternatively, a stratified sample can often be selected proportional to make it more representative of the population. <laughs> This means that proportion of particular strata in the sample should be the same as the proportion of total number in the strata compared to the entire population. Here, what I've done is these pictures show that I've selected four from there. However, you can see that this is not quite proportional. Here, you've got less purple, but I still pick four. Four out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is 50% of them. Right? So, in that case, uh, probably the picking them is half. Right? So, what we could do is use, use um, proportion. So, let's see. A high school consisting of 1,221 students in total from years 12, 7 to 12 are distributed as follows. Alright? For a survey, you wish to select a stratified sample of 60 students in total. How many students from each year group should be selected? Pretty much, you need to look at the proportion. Percentage of year 7, it's 2 to 1 on the proportion of year 7. In the whole school, is 2 to 1 out of 1, 2 to 1. So times 60, find the percentage, and times the sample size. And you get approximately 11 students. Can you go ahead and do for year 7, uh, year 8, year 9, year 10, year 11, year 12, please? At least do one or two. Uh, 4, 10. At least do one or two. Yes. That's true. They have on Wednesday, they have, if you pay 30 bucks, you get unlimited chicken wings. Wait, what? Yeah. Sure, it's like only for an hour. Like. No, 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 the whole night. You pay 30 bucks, you get limited chicken wings. Wait, 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 wait. Um, yeah, but then you also get the Lipton. Do you get the house chicken? Three hours chicken. chicken. Yeah, you get, if you pay $30, you get unlimited wings on Wednesday. Do you also get the. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, $30, you get unlimited Do you get the iced tea as well? Alright. The unlimited iced tea. Three hours chicken. Come on, do your calculation, please. Do you get the one on Wednesday? Wednesday. It should be about 12 from year 8. 12 or so. Wait, actually. Uh, 12 from year 9, and so on and so forth. Classic bro. Now, well, that's a good chicken well. listen, you do all these proportions, you still to make sure that, you must make sure that you're checking. Do a quick sanity check, and you add up all this. Add up all this number. It should equal 60. Yep. What happens if it doesn't, sir? Uh, if it is like 61, yeah. it it's a rounding error. Alright, something like 61 or 59 could generally be rounding error, but you should be right. Now, example 3 is slightly more complicated. Slightly more complicated. You need to think about a company which to form a staff social committee consisting of 18 members. They decide to use the method of stratified sampling for selecting the committee members. Can you do it? So you, you can see that here, what the company has done is make it into admin staff or factory workers, yep. or male and female. Alright? 
Now, what you need to do is think about finding the total. All right, uh, before that, how many from each group should be selected to re represent all groups fairly? Or how many from each group should be selected if no distinction is made between males and females? So, work out the total first. Now, people who are doing X also should know that these are the tables. When you have this sort of table, always work out the total. Right? Yeah. So the admin male is 11 over 160 because you've got 11 males over that's 160 uh, people all up. That's only one. Female is three. Can you work on factory workers, please? Was it cool? Is it 20 bucks for yeah. iced tea? 25 bucks for each? No, 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 that's for the drugs, yeah. That was one of the cage impressions. There's no way they do that. They do, because they do unlimited, they do unlimited arms. All right. Again, I you must do well. the sanity check. Make sure there is 18. How many from each group should be selected if no distinction is made between males and females? So, we look at the total of admin staff. Admin, 30 over 160, not 60, 160 times 18 will be 4. Alright? And workers, 135 divided 160. They should be 160. Yeah. All right. Should be 14. So all up is 18. So this is proportional stratified sampling. Now, systematic sampling. Systematic sampling involves choosing representative from the population by taking every n number of the population. So if we all have a number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we could be picking just the odd number of the systematic is one, three, five, seven. Could be just every second one, or could be every uh, third one. One, four, seven, so on and so forth. All right. Now, if we had a population size of one thousand, then every member of the population is given a number from one to one thousand. Mm -hmm. If you one fifty, means that we're selecting one in twenty. So we will then randomly select number from 1 to 20, if it is 6. So we start off from 6. The next one to pick is 26, because it's 20, it's systematic. 6, 26, 46, 66, 86, so on and so forth. Alright? Now, if the random number happens to be, uh, let's say, 960. You go from 9... Uh, Plus 20 is 986, plus 20 is it's 106. How do you do that? You go back to the start. Alright, you go back to the start. So that's systematic sampling. So let's try example 4, please. So you need to select 10 students using the enrollment numbers at the school. So enrollment number from 5130. You need to start from 5130, and current enrollment number is 49282567.2. So you must use your rent list to generate a certain number. What number do you want to generate? Oh, before that, sorry. Before that, work out the number of, uh, work out the total enrollments. Once you work out the total enrollments, you know that you want to pick 10. You need to divide 74.5, uh, sorry, 7. 145 by 10, which means every 75th student. Alright, every 75th student that you're picking. So, yep. um, like, what's the benefit of doing this over like the simple random sampling? Because I feel like it's just, you're just getting random things it is, anyway. It is part of, uh, it's, just, it's just a way of systematically doing it. Sometimes it's yeah. a lot easier. Uh, if you've got a, 
For example, if you have a big company trying to um, trying to survey um, the their their clients or whatever, yeah. instead of instead of just picking whatever, they they go to systematically just uh, based on their numbers. That's all. Oh right. It's just it's just a way of random sampling. Okay. It's the same. Yep. It's inclusive. Oh, because if you if you if you if you don't add one five oh seven two take away four nine thirty eight, you you either you don't count the first one or the last one, so you always have to add one. All right. So select any student, every student. So if I start from five one three zero here, you don't have to generate the list. You just keep on going. All right. So up to there, what do you do? You start again. You work out how many from five one, five six five five to five six seven two. I think that's uh thirteen, and then you've got to plus some more for four nine eight eight five. So it's just a way of doing it, systematically doing it. There's no advantages by picking uh, whatever. I don't think. Now, what about a street? Particular street has house number one to eight, three eight six. Use systematic sampling to choose 20 houses for an, for an employment. Use your uh, class bet. What, what did I say? Employment is not employment. It should be. Uh, I don't know. It's my typing. Start off with a random number. Now you could use any sort of an, uh, random number anyway, right? But you know that's hundred. Three hundred eighty-six. So at approximately every nineteen houses, two ways of doing it. You can, or or that's not only two ways. There are many ways. You can use select one number from 386. All right? Say that's 294. So you start off with 294, you keep going. All right? Or you could start off with 1 to 19. So you can start off with 5 and then you keep going. It's up to you how you want to do it. You can select from 1 to uh, 38, pick 1. And then you can think about what you want to do. So yes. But um, for the first example, if you start two ninety four, we have enough space. Oh. Yes, you go back oh, yeah, to the start. Yeah, you, right. the start. You, you go back to the start. Yeah, okay. So after three seventy, you go back to three. Yeah. All right. Good. Go back to three. Yeah. Cluster sampling. Cluster sampling is a sampling method where researcher divides the entire population into separate groups or cluster. Now, you need to think about this as not a stratified group. All right? It's not a homogeneous group. Yep. This will not be a homogeneous group. It will be sort of like based on classroom. Oh, no, hang on. Classroom is not good enough because if you talk about school, based on classroom will be... Uh, no, that's, that's not, 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 not ideal. I think you missed. Because we are in year group anyway. So then a random sample of this class is selected. All observations within the chosen cluster are included in the sample. The method is typically used when the population is large, widely dispersed, and inaccessible. The cluster should ideally mirror the characteristic of the population as a whole. So, this is uh, yeah, this is an example. Say a population, a popular fast food chain has 540 stores state, nationwide. And management wishes to survey its customer about a possible new menu. So each store can be considered as a cluster, and you can allocate the number one to five hundred and forty, and then you can use random number generator to pick eighty of them. All right. Now, the thing is, if you look at cluster sampling, so in this situation, I've represented in a diagram. I've got six clusters here and I only pick this one and that and everyone in there they're included 
in the survey. So a big difference between cluster sampling and uh, stratified sampling. Stratified sampling, <laughs> these are the homogeneous group, and you pick from that group. Few. Whereas in here, they are not homogeneous, they can be anything else, can be uh, this group may have everyone, may have everyone. So there could be, let's say, year 7 only, year 8, year 9, year 10, year 11, year 12. But this could be based on probably the whole LMA or the whole swan bond or whatever. And you pick. Yeah, mm. the whole group. So that's the difference. All right? Now, now let's talk about non-probability sampling methods. It's going to be quick, I think. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Convenient sampling involves choosing a sample from a convenient group from the group from the population. If we want to collect data about primary school students, the local primary school will be the convenient school to choose. So the method is used as a preliminary investigation of a situation that can give some direction to more detailed data collection later or using more sophisticated sampling methods. Quota sampling. Quota sampling is by the time they get enough people, they wouldn't, uh, they will stop. So choosing the first convenient representative of each of the population division or strata within the population to form a sample. So quota sampling can be non-proportional or proportional. It does not take into, if for non-proportional quota sampling, it does not take into account the size of each strata whilst proportional quota sampling does. So if you require a sample of 60 students from Shenton College, we could select the first 10 students from each year group that arrives on campus to make up, uh, to make up a non-proportional quota sample. Or we could uh, simply conveniently select the number of students from each year group proportional to the size of year group. All right? Volunteer sampling. Basically, it's like phone in. I mean, you must have got phone uh, messages. And generally, I'll say no. If that's, yeah. I don't like doing this sort of uh, survey, so I generally will say no. So, phone in survey is one. And um, if it's not random at all, all right? So, it is really not random at all because you will express your opinion. Judgment of purpose, uh, purposive uh, sampling is choose a sample that's most useful uh, to the purpose of the research. So, for example, a, a study conducted within the workplace could be done by selecting a sample from people who have been employed for more than five years at a company, all right? rather than someone who's more junior. Snowball sampling. So, if the population is hard to access, then the participant can ask other participants based on context they know. So you start off with one, somebody will ask you, uh, do you have friends who like to do this survey? You'll give the number of your friends. Your friends will give three other numbers and so on and so forth until you find the sampling. So this is called a snowball sampling. All right? So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, finish here and there should be enough work for you to do from uh, club Settler or Nelson? So I go, oh, it's, it's, it's pyramid scheme. Oh, I'm sorry.